geometric representation of consistent systems. Well, here I will introduce you to uh, planes and their interaction. Like whenever we have two or more planes, then they can intersect. They can intersect in a line, in a point. They may not intersect, right? If they intersect, then we say that we have a solution and we say the system is consistent, right? So whether the solution is unique or they have infinite number of solutions, uh, we consider that to be consistent. If there is no solution to the system of uh, equations, then we say it is inconsistent system, right? So let's first consider geometric representation of consistent system in this video and then look for inconsistent system in the other video, okay? Now, if we have two planes, let's consider first the case where we have two planes, right? Two planes represented by two different linear systems, for example, correct? In that case, there are two possibilities. The, the two planes could be parallel, right? So in case the two planes are parallel, let's say this is one plane and the other plane is, let me take another ring here, the other plane is kind of like this, for example, right? They are parallel, correct? And so, so in that case, if they are parallel, they will not intersect, right? So that becomes inconsistent. So that is not what we are discussing here, right? So what we are discussing, but not in details, right? Now here, the possibility could have been other way is, let's say we have a plane here and uh, the other one is not parallel to it, right? So if it is not parallel to it, in that case, let's say it's like this, right? So, so they will intersect. And when they intersect, they will always do so in a line. Do you see that? So two planes, if they intersect, they will always intersect in a line. That is what I want to tell you here, right? So what is the condition which tells you that the two planes will intersect? So condition is very simple and that is if N1 is the normal for the one plane, then and N2 is the normal for the other plane, then they should not be scalar multiple of one another. That means this is the condition, right? If they are parallel, that means of course N1 is, is a scalar multiple of N2, right? So they are parallel, correct? So this is the system which we say consistent and the solution for the system is always a line. So two planes intersect in the line, correct? So that's what happens for two planes, correct? Now let's consider three planes. Now in three planes there could be different scenarios. So let's consider three planes. Now first the three planes could overlap, right? So we have three planes like this. Let's say one and the other one is right there and they're actually one over the other, for example, like this. You see that? One, two, and three. Correct? So in this case, three are actually the same planes, right? So if the three planes are exactly the same planes, uh, then the, they have a solution, right? The solution is the plane itself. Every point is, is kind of a solution to this system, right? So here, they say the system is consistent, all the three planes overlap, one over the other, correct? Now, and so we say, well, the normals are the same, right? So it is N1 equals to N2 equals to N3, right? Uh, well, it could be scalar multiple, you can say, but they are exactly the same, okay? And uh, secondly is that if I write in the Cartesian form, AX plus BY plus CX plus D, that means... then D is also same for all of them, right? That is what we're trying to say, right? Equals to zero, D is also same. They're exactly same planes, right? In this kind of a situation, when the same planes are there, if you're solving systems of equation using matrix, then the reduced matrix will look like this. So you have 
it will look like this. There could be any number here, but the idea is that these will be zeros. So that is how your reduced uh, matrix will look like. So this means this statement is always true, right? Statement is always true. Let's say z for every value of z it is true. So that means z could be a parameter t, right? And that statement is always true. 0 is equal to 0, correct? So if 0 is equal to 0, we could use a parameter for y. So y is a parameter, correct? So when we have two parameters, that means we have a solution which has two para parameters and that solution is a plane, right? So that is the kind of thing which we expect here and this uh, and we know it's, it's just a plane, right? So this scalar multiple, every equation I should say, not only normals are seen, the equation is scalar multiple of one another. So the equation could be, let me say this equation times k, right? So that means it is exactly the same plane, right? So that is what the equation is. Now the second case of consistent systems could be that two are same, right? Let's say we have the plane like this. and another plane like this two are same but the third one is not the same right so third one crosses like this let us see and it intersects and that is the line of intersection okay so that's, that is the line of intersection so in this case what happens is the system is consistent why because they have a solution and the intersection between the three planes is set of points which is a line so they have a common line for it so the intersection is now a line right so we have a line here in intersection and two planes are, are same over one over the other right so they coincide so we have all three coincides here so all coincides right here two coincides Here all three coincide. Correct? So in this case, if you solve your equation, then you'll get a condition like this. So that part will be 0 equals to 0. So that is kind of important, right? Here you may have some other value, correct? So what really happens is that when you reduce your equivalent uh, matrix then this is what you get that means one parameter will define you say z equals to t right in this case when you're writing a solution in this case right so what do you write you write z equals to t and then everything in terms of t in this case what do you do you write z equals to t and also y equals to s so you get the equation of a plane now here it is in terms of a line there's only one parameter which we have defined to solve for this equation correct so so that is how the equation is right now the other condition could be now that two planes which we saw are same they are not they're not together they don't coincide so the third condition where we could get a solution is that these planes are not coinciding right so in that case Let's assume that the planes are like this now for us. So we have a plane here, correct? And the second plane which was coinciding is kind of shifted, let us say, right? So let's say we have the third, second plane which is kind of sh shifted, right? And then our third plane but they coincide on the line. Do you see this line on which they are coinciding? Let's say this is our third plane, right? So these three planes also coincide. And here also we have line, which is the solution for our system of equations, correct? So, but we have three distinct planes in this case, right? So we have three distinct 
planes, right? And uh, they, they, are, they are not parallel to one another, correct? And in this case, we find that the line of intersection is a point. And here, if you solve for a matrix, then also we will get the same type of an equation as we got here, right? Because the solution represents a line, right? So line will be represented only if we have one parameter. So these are numbers other than zeros. Do you see that? And these are zeros, correct? So, so here again, we have one parameter and we can say z equals to t and the solution is a line, right? The solution is a line. Now, there are a few very interesting characteristics which we can see. When there is a common line between the two, then you will find that the normals can be written as a scalar combination of the other two, right? So we can, we have a couple of more properties here which, which you should check for and that is that normal, one normal can be written as linear combination, let's say N3, can be written as A times N2 plus B times N1 as a linear combination of the other two normals, right? So that shows that the normals are coplanar. So normals are coplanar, you can also use scalar triple product. That is to say that N3 dot N1 times N2 should be equal to zero. So right, so normals are coplanar in these cases, okay? In all these cases which we have considered so far, the normals are coplanar, okay? Now, and th this is a test, this is called scalar triple product, which shows that the normals are coplanar. So let me write that here, normals coplanar, right? However, there is one more condition where they can intersect and this time they can intersect like a point. Let me show you how. So let's draw this again. Let's say this is our plane which goes like this and then we have a plane which is like a So that is our line of interest. Let me just draw this first. It's easier to draw. This is the line of intersection for these two planes, okay? So let me just extend this, okay? Okay, and let us say the third plane is actually getting into it, right? So, so it's kind of difficult to draw it, but um, Think like this. Like getting into it like this. Do you see that? Like this. So in that case, what happens is that there is only one point of intersection and that is, the, let's say, it is, it, this is the line of intersection between the two planes and let's say this cuts through it horizontally, right? That means the normals are not coplanar, right? In that case, what happens is I, I'll just, that could be the point of intersection between the two planes, do you understand? So, so that is what leads to uh, where three distinct planes are there and we, they don't really have a line of intersection. So we, they have, and in this case what is happening here is that the normals are not in the same plane. Let me show you another way of doing it, right? Uh, this could be written, shown like this. Like you remember, you see the coordinate system you have, correct? You see the coordinate system? It's kind of like this. So we have three planes here, correct? So this is, this is one plane, right? This is one plane and that's, that's the plane, that's another plane going through this and that's, this is the third plane. All the three planes are actually intersecting at one point correct and that is the solution that is what I'm trying to sketch here right so so th that's what it is in this case when you draw your matrix you'll get something like this you won't you won't get all zeros here so what you get here is zero zero and some number right is equal to some number so Z is a particular value correct and similarly 
the other matrices are so that is how your solution will look like correct and here the solution is a point and here more important how can you check this also in this case n3 dot n1 cross n2 will not be equal to zero right because the normals are not in the same plane correct so this will not be equal to zero nor will the normals be in any combination correct so that is the kind of solution which you expect for a consistent system where one unique point is the point of intersection between uh, three planes correct so these are different scenarios in which you get a solution for a system of equation correct and now these are the ways you can see they can be represented so this is graphical representation and that is the solution which you do algebraically correct and these are some tests which you can do to find out whether you will get one point of intersection or a line of intersection to find out whether the normals are coplanar or not right in this case normals not coplanar right right so so that's the basics about our planes and how uh, they intersect with one another whether they have a solution or they don't have a solution uh, for the system and then we have many examples to for each so that you can understand what I'm trying to show here and what I'm trying to show here correct so look into those uh, and then also see the scenarios where the system is inconsistent okay thank you